so uh, welcome to today's lecture so till yesterday we had uh, done on uh, auto encoders and then uh, subsequent to that we did have a lot of uh, exercises and they were uh, very basic exercises on trying to deal with number of images and then of different varieties and then you also saw down how to do a pixel to pixel classification how to do a patch to patch classification how to handle down grayscale images which are just in one channel versus how to handle down even uh, color uh, channel images and then over multiple classes so ranging from just 10 class classification problem to multiple class classification problems as well as uh, we even uh, did down uh, one particular one where we were doing trying to do a patch to uh, patch based pixel to pixel uh, classification over there. Now that was just using a simple auto encoder and today what we would be doing is uh, using down something called as a stacked auto encoder. So a family of stacked auto encoder is something which uh, if you carefully look into it, so this is a way of uh, basically stacking down uh, um, your uh, auto encoders or how to do it basically by uh, stacking one layer after the other. And as I was telling you that uh, when you have these hidden layers over there one by one in a multi-layer perceptron, so one of the challenges is that the dynamics of the total network depends on dynamics of each layer itself. And then if we have some way in which we can actually uh, freeze down one layer at a time and then keep on training it subsequently, it would be much easier to train on the complete network. So without uh, much of a delay, let's uh, get into what it is. So I would be introducing uh, again, once again, the, that basic concept of autoencoder and what you knew about it. Uh, then uh, I would be speaking about what is called as a stacking of autoencoder, then uh, something called as a ladder wise pre-training. And uh, so um, uh, there are two basic options of doing an auto encoder uh, training basically. One method is what is called as a ladder wise pre-training and that means that you grow one uh, hidden layer at a time. The other method is basically using something called as an end to end pre-training which means that you create the total auto encoder structure over there and train it in one single go. And then uh, you can cascade uh, like break apart the auto encoder part over there, have down all the feature representations and then try to cascade that with a multi-layer perceptron in order to uh, with, with just a sigmoid layer on the decision side in order to create something called as a multi-layer perceptron. So uh, again revising it down what happened in an autoencoder was something of this sort that you had your input x okay. Now if this is an image then this is basically a set of all the pixels present in the patch of that image and now using all the pixels over there you can basically uh, arrange all the pixels into one single one one neuron over there. So if I have a 5 cross 5 patch it may, uh, and it is a grayscale image so it means there are 25 pixels over there. So I will have uh, 25 such input neurons over here. Now if this is a 5 cross 5 patch but from a color image an RGB color image so it means that there are 3 into 5 into 5 which means 75 pixels over there. So I would be having 75 uh, nodes in this input layer over there. Now from there I connect it down to the first hidden layer. Now this first hidden layer will have some n number of nodes over there and all of these neurons on the input will be connected to all the neurons on the output. Now again from this uh, first hidden layer to the second hidden layer everything will be connected and that is how your standard MLP is formed down. But uh, what we want to discuss out is if this is a pure auto encoder which means that p hat whatever is predicted is equal to x that is what we would like to do then uh, how can you use that one in order to uh, uh, and then how, how can we have different ways of doing that one. So one technique or as I call it, basically there are two techniques. So we will start with calling one of them, referring one of them as one technique or a ladder wise pre-training technique and the other one is which is an end to end learning or the other technique over there. So here the idea is basically that you would like to auto encode one layer at a time. So while trying to do an auto encoding of one layer at a time what we would typically start with it, say I have an input x. I have one hidden layer h1 and then I'm whatever I am predicting out is what is called as x hat and that x hat is something which is supposed to be similar in its all forms to x as well. Okay. Now the weights which connect down x to h1 is what is called as w1, the weights which connect h1 to x is what is called as w1 dashed. Okay. And uh, we did do from uh, last week's uh, simple mathematics that uh, this uh, uh, h1 is completely dependent on w1 and x uh, hat is what is dependent on w1 dashed and the reason we put down dashed is because this is what is uh, trying to symmetrically relate to the other side of it. Okay. Now when you have this sort of a form over there, so what you can do is um, while training this is the basic um, uh, training algorithm which I am going to use over there. So my objective is that I would like to minimize the cost function 
uh, for all of these w1 and w1 dashed such that like wherever w for w1 and for whatever value of w1 and w1 dashed i have my minimum error coming over here that's the best composition of uh, these two weights and this error is defined as the euclidean norm or the l2 norm of the input and the output over there and this means that uh, my best case is when x is equal to x hat and that is when my error will be zero and that's the best form of an auto encoding now once i have trained this one i would like to include another hidden layer but what i do in that case is after this training is done i would be chopping off this uh, weights over here now if i chop off these weights over here i can just uh, look into my outputs from my h1 and the output from my h1 is something which can be defined like this as z1 the output of my first hidden layer is what i called as z1 if you carefully note that i have written down these uh, uh, tensors over here in the form of bold okay so these are basically arranged uh, so some some matrix form of an ordering of uh, scalar values which is present over there and then my nonlinear function over there will uh, do it over this tensor inner product now once i have these uh, outputs from here which is z1 what i can do is i can look into stacking the other layer so in order to stack that other layer what i would do is i would no more be taking my input x over there but once that network is trained on my training data what i can do is i can use all of my training data and transfer it through that network and get an equivocal representation of z1 right so for my first sample of x i will have one equivalent sample of z1 for my second sample of x i will have an another equivalent sample of z1 then that's how this uh, whole training set can be transformed into another uh, transformed form and that is known as the z1 transformed form now here for training it what i would do is i would use this z1 and then try to reconstruct z1 itself and that is z1 hat and the two weights which will be associated now to the second hidden layer is w2 and w2 dashed so you use the same sort of an argument over there and you would try to minimize this difference between z1 and z1 dashed and if this one comes down to zero that means that you are at the best possible combination of w2 and w2 dashed now once that is done now i can chop off my weight layer over here w2 dashed now that i chop off my weight layer on w2 dashed what i get is a second uh, sort of a latent output which is called as z2 so z2 is a transformed version of z1 which i have over here now for once this training is done now what i can do is for each value of z1 i can transform it through this set of equations and get down z2 so it means till this point i have each single value of x on my training set represented in a form of value of z1 and also represented in another form of values for z2 so for each input patch which i give i have a set of features for that patch in terms of z1 i have another set of derived features uh, which come down from z1 for each of these patch and that is my z2 now once this part is done now i can stack another layer on top of it and that is say my sec, uh, my third hidden layer h3 and what that would do is the input to the third hidden layer is going to be z2 and this is going to predict down z2 hat itself and uh, this learning algorithm will still be going down in the same way such that i am able to get down the best point when my z2 hat is perfectly coming down then i can chop off this uh, uh, w3 over here the, the w3 prime so which connects down my h3 to z2 dashed and then i can get down a latent space called as z3 okay so so this by this time what we have is that each single patch x which was represented in a transform domain uh, representation called as z1 that could be represented in a transform domain representation called as z2 and accordingly that went forward to be represented in a transform domain representation called as z3 and that's how i am going down now the point is i can have another layer as well and then uh, in the similar way train it out and go it now after that when i would like to create this uh, total uh, multi layer perceptron in order to get down my y hat or my predicted class label or classification output whatever then what i would try to do is i have this w1 which was trained and kept down with me i have my w2 which was also trained and then if you uh basically unroll the network in terms of all of your z1 z2 z3 then you would see that for h4 the input was z1 which was an output from h3 okay the input to h3 was z2 which was an output from h2 now input to h2 was z1 which was an output of h1 and then input to h1 was this x 
Now, if this is completely unrolled and represented in terms of a network, then this is the sort of network connection which you would be getting. And these weights are what will be connecting down each of uh, uh, these uh, one layer to the next subsequent layer. However, you see that we have been able to till now in unsupervised framework where you do not need any kind of a class label. So, for every x that you have a y, but till now we had never been using that y and that was the beauty of uh, using an auto encoder for representation learning. So, w1, w2, w3 and w4 these are what are the learned representations and they do not make use of y. But in order to get down y hat which is my prediction I will have to connect this final uh, output. So, z4 or the output of the fourth hidden layer is what has to be connected down to my final decision node over here. Now that I am connecting this one I will have to initialize this w5 and then the uh, training process goes something like this that I would try to refine all of these weights. Now these weights w1 to w4 these are trained already they have been trained so they are somewhere close to the global uh, optimum is, is the assumption. So, I put down all the weights copy them from my earlier uh, pieces of network and paste it over here. For w5 I would be putting a random initialization over there and then start this optimization process. Now, in this optimization now I am no more looking back into x but now my idea is that uh, the total goal to achieve is that I have the minimum error in classification and that is where I am using y as my classification uh, ground truth uh, tensor and y dashed uh, y hat is what is my predicted classification tensor. And now if I am able to get down a 0 error then I am at the perfect classification uh, using this one. So, that was one technique. Now, going down to the other technique of this one is something which is called as an end to end pre training. So, in end to end pre training what you would do is say that I have uh, two hidden layers h1 and h2 and they are connected down by uh, w1 and w2 and um, on the co converse of it what I call is from h2 whatever is connected is called as h1 dashed via a weight of w2 dashed from h1 dashed it connects and recreates x hat. Uh, by these weights of w1 dashed. Now, this will be my first training algorithm and if you look over here since it is trying to predict x itself it is the patch itself. So, it does not make use of any uh, supervision over here. So, you, you do not have a uh, class label given down a supervisor acting as to uh, giving its classification performance and that is the reason why this is also called as an unsupervised learning algorithm or unsupervised pre-training. Okay. Now, once this is done uh, you can train and then uh, chop off these two weights over there. Now, once they are chopped off what you are left with is this h2 and the output from this h2 which uh, from the earlier cases we can relate and also call this as z2. Okay. Now, the idea is that this is the output z2 which can be defined something of this form. Now, I want to do a final supervised refinement and that means that after this h2 I will have to come down to a decision. Now, when coming down to a decision so what I need to do is I need to preserve my w1 and w2s from the earlier case w3 will be what is reinitialized now in order to map down this h2 onto this y okay and the final classification is what will be going down through this particular form in which you would try to minimize this argument now look uh, if you compare this particular method of uh, end to end pre training of the network with your earlier method which was a ladder wise pre training one significant difference which you would see is that in the ladder wise pre training since we were uh, training one uh, weight at a time. So, the good thing is that in order to train down these first weight w1 then w2 you would be needing uh, less amount of memory as such at any given point of time. So, your total uh, RAM space which is required for training is much lesser whereas over here since you are trying to train all the hidden layer weights. So, it is going to be much higher and also this kind of a pre-training the major disadvantage is that say my final one is just with two hidden layers which means that I just have three layers of weights. But then when trying to train down the auto encoder as uh, if you can get down into this previous slide what you can see is that uh, I have h1 and h2 which connects down with w1 and w2 but conversely I will also have to put down these two more weights which are w2 dashed and w1 dashed and now what that would impose is that if I have uh, so whatever be the number of uh, uh, say matrix sizes for uh, my hidden layer for my representation learning I will need twice that number over here. So, for just two hidden layers where I was supposed to have just two uh, set of weights for my representation learning and one set of weight for classification while just doing this auto encoder part I will need two times of the number of hidden layers as the weights which is clearly large. So, 
if this number of hidden layers over here changes from h1 h2 to h3 which means three hidden layers then on the converse side of it i will have h2 dashed and h1 dashed together so that would mean i need to have w1 w2 w3 w3 dashed w2 dashed w1 dashed while doing an autoencoder training which means that for three hidden layers i will need six set of weights whereas for three hidden layers and just doing a classification i'm supposed to go down and get down only four set of weights now typically that would mean that uh, with an end to end learning in an auto encoding framework you would need twice the number of weights uh, then you would be actually needing to so all, almost in the order of twice the number of weights then you would be needing to train down just an simple mlp and that's clearly a disadvantage and that's one of the reasons why for auto encoder training ladder wise pre training is something which is preferred because you your maximum memory is always limited by the total length of the network and the maximum variable space you don't need at any point of time variable space which is more than the total length of the network which you are speaking about now given all of this uh, we come down to an end for uh, this lecture and and that's where uh, i have a few take home messages for you so autoencoders as such are quite a uh, interesting thing to explore and uh, in order to uh, read more about them i would definitely refer you to this uh, master thesis from uh, tu denmark by uh, uh, rasmus berg palm and uh, so this is one of the most uh, comprehensively written down text in the form of understanding uh, hierarchical models or or auto encoding models as we call them today in terms of uh, in deep learning so he also has a matlab based toolbox which you can give it a try though we are not covering any of those matlab based exercises and all the models which are described over there uh, we would be drawing a one to one correlation for each of them and using it for our pur purpose within our uh, tutorials as well and then you can relate that a lot of other um, uh, explanatory tutorials on codes which we had done in the previous week are something which bear down a resemblance to this thesis as well the other one is you can go down through vincent pascal's uh, one on uh, jmlr and this is about uh, stack denoising auto encoders and uh, that's something which we will be doing in the next class and trying to explain you more into what is uh, stacking of auto encoders and uh, so stacked auto encoders is what we have done we will be going into denoising and sparsity within auto encoders uh, as such so that uh, brings us to the end and uh, for this one and stay tuned and uh, for the next class we will be doing down with sparse and denoising properties of auto encoders as well thanks